Yo mate, what up? Welcome to the lawn tip vid. Righty, so today's video is on my top 10 tips on how to get your lawn looking nice and beautiful and luscious. So let's just start off with tip number one. Tip number one is mulching your lawn. So what is mulching your lawn, you may ask? Well, mulching your lawn is recycling your clippings straight back into your lawn instead of picking them up with the catcher or the bagger, whatever you want to call it. So the reason we do that is to actually promote extra growth throughout the growing season. So recycling your clippings actually puts back 25% back of your fertilizer needs into your lawn. So you save 25% of fertilizer during the year if you're actually recycling your clippings back into the lawn. And it also helps those soil microorganisms to feed off those clippings as well and it doesn't create thatch like a lot of people think it does. If anything it just makes your lawn a lot healthier and makes it look nice and green and luscious. So definitely get rid of that bagger and recycle those clippings. Now to actually mulch those clippings back in, you'll need a mulching mower. So something that actually is advertised as a mulching mower. My tire recycler has that and that's why they're called a recycler is because it actually mulches those clippings back into the lawn. Some mowers, like the lower end ones, don't actually come as a mulcher. So you'll actually just have to use your catcher. You'll find on your instructions if it is a mulching mower or not, or you'll find there's a plug in the back where the grass actually shoots out from. So yeah, you have to make sure you've got a mulching mower to actually mulch the lawn. Now this is probably one of the more important tips, number two, is watering your lawn properly. Now the reason we want to water our lawn properly is to prevent diseases happening in your lawn, to get those roots shooting down nice and deep, and also just to have a nice, lush, healthy lawn. State the obvious. I'm Captain Obvious. But basically, the way we want to be watering our lawn is giving a nice deep watering two to three times a week. So splitting up our watering over the week. So you want to be giving your lawn at least an inch to an inch and a half of water per week. If you've got warm season grass, you can get away with half an inch a week to an inch. Really depends on the season. You've just got to make sure you keep an eye on your lawn and see if it's getting thirsty for some water. The easy way to tell if it is, is um, you'll see that the leaf blades start to curl over a little bit and they get sort of a bluish, grey sort of a tinge look to the actual lawn. So splitting it up into three times a week, so maybe doing it on Monday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever works for you. Just make sure you're splitting up over three days a week. Now you want to put down an inch and a half. The best way to measure that is normally those tuna cans that you get down at Woolies or Coles or if you're in America, wherever you get a tuna can from, they hold about an inch of water in them. So they're a handy little thing. So chuck it out in the middle of the yard and see how long it takes to fill up an inch of water and basically you just go from there. So if you want to do half an inch at a time, you obviously do half the amount of time it took you to fill up that tuna can. Now if you're watering your lawn too often, like a lot of people do, a lot of people water in the, at night time, they, you find that you actually start to get a lot of diseases in your lawn because diseases form overnight because the leaf is actually wet all night long. You want to be watering a couple of times nice and deep to get those roots shooting nice and low. Tip number three is renovate your lawn at least once a year, so giving a core, which is an aeration, dethatching, and then an oversow if your grass type produces grass seed. So the reason we want to do this it's just to create a nice, thick, healthy lawn yet again. I've said that so many times, but this is the reason we're doing this topic. And you'll find that if you do that once a year, your lawn is going to be looking magic, especially after renovation. It looks pretty dodgy for the first three or four weeks after your renovation, but once you've done it, you'll find that your lawn will just reap benefits from doing that. So make sure at least once a year you give it a renovation. If you can't do it once a year, do it once every two years and give it aerating a go because it makes a huge difference. It really helps those roots to shoot down a bit lower because you're actually letting some airflow get down in that root zone. Another quick tip, which is number four, give pre-emergence a go. So basically there's a chemical out there called pre-emergent, 
which stops your weed seeds from germinating. So Prodiamine, Dithiopia, there's a couple of other ones which you can also get out there. And basically what they do is stop the weeds germinating and keep your current lawn, just keep it ticking on. So the best time to apply those is spring and in autumn. Just as the season starts to fl flick over, you can do it a couple of weeks after. But the reason we use pre-emergence is so that we don't have to be continuously killing weeds off. They can be a bit expensive pre-emergence, but they're going to save you in the long run and stop a lot of dirty weeds getting in your lawn. So pre-emergence, give them a crack. Now this tip's more for the cool season growers, but also for guys who have St. Augustine, is grow your grass a little bit longer. So three to four inches if you can. You're so tall, girl. You are beautiful. And the reason we want to do this is because it actually stops weeds from germinating, because it actually covers over the soil beneath and stops those weeds getting in sunlight and actually stops them from germinating. Now if your lawn's not thick enough, obviously you're not going to get weeds stopping from germinating but if you've got a nice thick lawn and it's longer it gives you more chance against those weeds also if your lawn is a bit longer as well it gives the grass blade a bit of a longer surface area to actually photosynthesize from the sun so it's actually going to promote more growth and you're going to have a healthier lawn more disease resistant also more frost resistant and also more resistant to heat as well so definitely consider having a taller lawn because it's going to make your lawn a lot healthier if you're going to be cutting a bit shorter, maybe during those seasons that weeds are starting to pressure in a little bit, like the start of spring and the start of autumn, maybe bop it up a little bit, maybe an extra 10 mil higher than you normally would. Sounds like a lot, but it'll make a little bit of a difference throughout those seasons. So if you can, cut taller, have a better lawn. And this is one a lot of people miss out on, is sharpening your mower blades. Now make sure you sharpen your mower blades when you start to notice your grass blades are starting to look a bit torn. If you can't tell when that is, maybe do it every 10 mows, what works for you, but it's pretty easy to see because you get a sort of a whitey looking tip on your leaves of your grass and you'll find that they start to look a little bit brown when you look across it as well. I'll put a picture up just here of what it looks like when your grass blades aren't cutting properly. You get little stringy bits as well hanging off the top, but make sure you sharpen it whenever you see that happening. Some people say twice a season. It really depends on how often you mow. I like to do it every five, six mows, just because I like to be a little bit pedantic about it. But make sure you're sharpening your blades. Tip number six is fertilize properly. So make sure you're putting out the right amount of fertilizer per application and the right amount out per growing season and per year. So basically you'll be putting out two to three kilos per year, which is about six pounds if you're an American. And basically the reason you want to be doing that is because you don't want to overkill it with nitrogen and you just don't want to push too much growth on your lawn as well. I've actually got a video that I did on how to fertilize your lawn and I talk a bit more in depth about that. I'll link in the description below. Have a look at that, see what you think. And also just make sure you try and use organics as well if you can, because organics are actually gonna help your microorganisms become a lot healthier and really promote natural growth to your lawn. And it's slow release and it's a lot safer because you don't have as much risk of burning your lawn as well. So organics are the way to go. Synthetics are good and I like using them to kick into the season, but after that, I like to use organics. They stink, but they're good. Now the next tip we're gonna talk about, which is number eight, nearly there, is wetting agents. So if you haven't heard of wetting agents before, basically they stop your soil from being hydrophobic. You notice sometimes, especially in the summer, you'll find that your soil actually stops water from getting down into the soil. It just sort of sits on top or runs off if it's on a slope. So wetting agents basically stop that problem. So they stop your soil from being hydrophobic and actually allow the water to penetrate the soil surface and get those roots nice and watered. So basically, wetting agent is sort of like a dishwashing liquid and it sort of sits down in the soil and allows it to, the water to be soaked up and sort of allows it just to sit there for a little bit longer and allows your grass to be a bit healthy. So if you've got in a drought sort of a situation in the middle of summer and you can't water your lawn too often, use a wetting agent because you're gonna save on water. You can also use dishwashing liquid. A lot of people like to use soap to actually as a wetting agent, but it's better to get those products that are a little bit more expensive and work a bit better. We use some stuff at work called Folimax from the guys at New Turf here in Australia. A lot of green keepers will use that stuff. It's awesome stuff. The stuff that lasts for 90 days and the stuff that lasts a month. We also like to use this stuff with insecticides and that to help it actually penetrate the soil surface again and get that insecticide inside the soil so it actually hits those insects as well. So think about using wetting agents because if you're finding during summer you need to water too much and you find certain patches are starting to get 
really brown and other sections are green is probably because your soil is hydrophobic. So consider wetting agents. Tip number nine is use an edger to make your lawn look nice and tidy. It's more of an aesthetic thing, basically so people can look at your lawn and go mad. That is a fully hectic lawn mate that's sick. But consider doing it. You can use your whippersnipper and turn it on the side if you like, if you can't afford an actual blade edger. Otherwise use a blade edger and get that nice tight straight line. Really does make a big difference when you edge your lawn. It makes it look just that little bit tidier. Oi, what are you doing, boy? You can dance with the camera. That edge is so tidy. Green, 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 the grass is. Last tip, which is number 10, and my favorite tip is lawn striping. It's just an aesthetic thing yet again, but I really love lawn striping because you can really show off your lawn to all the guys in your neighborhood. Basically how lawn stropping works is, when you walk one direction the grass blades get pushed over by a roller and then you walk the other direction they get pushed the opposite direction and it's the way that the sun actually reflects off the grass blades. Right, these stripes aren't easy to see just because the sun's not directly behind with the way that they're facing but these lighter ones just here, the grass blades are laying away from us and the darker stripes just here, the grass blades are laying towards us. I did a video a while back on how to make your own lawn striper. Go check it out if you want to see how to make your own roller. It's a bit easier when you've got longer grass. If you've got shorter grass you can still do it. A lot of guys do it with cylinder mowers. I know that works really well because they're quite a bit heavier as well so they push it over. At work we've got cylinder mowers and they stripe up places really well. But you can make your own roller chuck on the back of your roadie mower. Check it out, give it a go, have some fun with it. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you like my videos, chuck a like below and I hope you have a good week. Ooh.